Greetings, Steam Deckers, Liam here. Just to let you know, a bit of an update, that SteamOS 3.5 is finally officially here and it is released for all Steam Deck owners. It's a pretty big upgrade too for the whole system from gaming mode to desktop mode. It's a long time coming as well since looking back SteamOS 3.4 was actually released back in December of 2022. So we're nearly a full year since the last big system update. A bunch of the features I went through in my SteamOS 3.5 beta video, but let's have a bit of a refresher, shall we? But we also had a Steam client update released at the same time as well. There's just so many different changes. First up, SteamOS 3.5 is the update that brings the new default color rendering for the Steam Deck LCD model to emulate the sRGB color gamut, giving warmer and more vibrant colors. You can change this at any time in the new display settings and just hit the adjust display colors button where you can then swap the color vibrancy and the color temperature anytime. Now you can actually use this while in a game where you will get an overlay of the options to let you adjust it in real time while a game is playing to find whatever sweet spot you need because you might want to change this differently depending on each game. So with my little demo here, you're seeing Ori and the Will of the Wisps and me playing with the sliders to hopefully just give you a basic little idea of what to expect from these new settings. If you look close enough, you'll notice pretty clearly how different the color modes are and the temperature can also make a massive difference in certain games as well. And as I said, you can change this at any time in any game so just play around with it and see what you think. It is perfectly safe. And seriously, the new default for the Steam Deck LCD is so much better. You'll also find that there's HDR and variable refresh rate settings now for external displays when it's supported. You'll see these options appear in the performance menu when you're connected up to an external display. Some other updates include a improved resume speed, which was ridiculously fast overall, but now it's just that little bit better. As you'll see me here with the LCD model getting back into a game from sleep mode. Now this is by far still my absolute favorite feature on the Steam Deck. It is so incredibly useful when you need to go and quickly do something to stop everything at the touch of a button and just come back later. So like when you need to answer the door, take a poop, deal with your kids, make dinner, whatever else you need to do. The Steam Deck Sleep and Resume was made for busy people and it is glorious. So any improvements there are always welcome. Lots of other changes elsewhere. The Steam Deck will also now auto mount external drives and you can even customize the performance overlay that gives you the FPS, frame timing, temperatures, RAM use and so on. As an example of how to do it, you'll want a keyboard attached to type this out easily. In desktop mode, open up the file manager and unhide hidden files and folders in the hamburger menu. This will then show the .config folder where we go in and make a mango HUD folder, making sure you've got a capital M and capital H. And then inside, we need to make a presets conf file then open up that file with a text editor and under a bracketed heading of preset 1 preset 2 preset 3 we're just going to add some custom details on each separate line so for my test here in preset 1 we're just going to have the battery level setting everything else off preset 2 adds in the time and the fps as well as the battery and then preset 3 just as a basic demo, it will have everything in full. I'll have a link to my own settings in the description if you do want to just grab that file. So saving that file once we're finished typing away and then heading back into gaming mode, loading up Spidey again. And you'll see when I go into the performance menu overlay that my level one now just has the battery level as I put in that file. And then level two adds in the time and the battery and the FPS and then level three gives us everything. This is really fun to play with. And my example obviously is really basic just to show it working and to get you going and show you what to do. You can find everything on the Mango HUD GitHub page 
when you scroll down, it gives you all the different things that you can use. If you want to change back to the default settings for the performance overlay, all you need to do is either rename or remove that file back in desktop mode like I'm doing here. So I've just deleted it. Then I've jumped back into gaming mode, loaded Spidey up again, and you'll see that the performance overlay details across the presets are back to normal. There's no harm in doing this. If it doesn't work, you can just go back and edit the file until it gets where you want it, or you can remove it just to revert back to the default. There's lots more to this update. The change log is really long, especially with the new refreshed Linux kernel and Arch Linux package base for the upgrade of the operating system itself. There's the updated KDE Plasma desktop mode, an updated graphics driver, and the list just keeps going on. A good one for people doing emulation is that they fixed it where certain workloads would exhibit severe CPU performance issues unless SMT was manually disabled. So they fixed that up now as well. Some keen eyes might also notice that Steam Deck's gaming mode interface had some subtle changes as well. This comes from the latest Steam client update that was also released because Valve said they've done many small changes throughout to make the interface more visually rich in the home, the library, and other areas. A lot of it is quite subtle. It's just tweaking the darkness, the vibrancy of different things like the backgrounds on games. One of the things you may notice, like here in my Steam library, is when you hover over each item, you now get a fancy dash of color around it that matches the main color of the library image. Just lots of little fun tweaks like that. And of course, finally, SteamOS 3.5 is the update that added full system support for the beautiful Steam Deck OLED model that I have in my hands here right now. Be sure to check out my previous little Q&A videos on the Steam Deck OLED for some feature demonstrations there. I have been having a ridiculous amount of fun with the OLED model because that screen is just pure unfiltered love from me because it really is so much better. It's insane. Even without HDR, the color on it just pops out at you so much more. It is fantastic. That's it for the SteamOS 3.5 video. Let me know how you get on with the update in the comments. I'm always keen to hear from you and I'll see you later.